This is the Smith Corona Adding Machine Model 8MA, first made in 1954. It has columns for seven digits of input, colored green and green. It has the T and the S, the NA, the repeat, the error, and this one over here. It's got a nice looking crank and my favorite touch, a glass window so you can see what's happening in there. And it's all licensed under Goobleman patents. The Smith Corona Company started in 1886 as the Smith Premier Typewriter Company, founded by the four Smith brothers, Lyman, Monroe, Wilbert, and Hurlbut. I'm not making that up, his name really was Monroe. In the 1890s, they made one of the first typewriters that could write in both uppercase and lowercase. It had two separate keyboards for that. Like most of the other typewriter companies, Smith Corona also made adding machines. Their adding machine business was never really a major player. They were just solid machines, more or less doing what everybody else was doing. This one here is the Model 8MA. There was also a 7MA. The 7 or the 8 is how many digits it can handle. On this one we have seven digits on the keyboard, but the internal register can store eight digits, so they call this the 8MA. If you look just right through the window, you can see the serial number printed on one of the metal parts. That's a true 8MA. This is the only machine that I have that was given to me by the original, original owner. Dolores is a lady at my church who used to work at a bank a few years back. They bought this thing for her to use, and Dolores ended up bringing it home at some point. Many decades later, she's cleaning out her basement and she thought of me. Thanks, Dolores. I was shocked to see how clean it is after all this time. Usually these old machines are pretty dirty when I find them, but this thing is beautiful. That's because I have this original homemade cover made by Dolores herself. That's some serious commitment to your machine, Dolores. Just like Dolores herself, the thing is in mostly working order after all these years. You type in the number you want to add and turn that crank. Then you type in another number and crank it. Each time the number you typed gets printed. And to add it all up, you hit this total button and crank it. It prints out the total with this little star next to it, so you know that line is the total. The totaling isn't quite right. You see the leftmost digits, which are supposed to default to zeros, they don't always do what they ought to. Did you see that technique? That's for amateurs. Here's the pro technique. I actually learned this from a comment on one of my other videos. Look at that one smooth motion. After it prints the total, the internal mechanism resets to zero and you're ready to start adding again. The S button here is for subtotals. This will print the total, but it does not reset everything to zero. This here is the non-adding button. This will print a number onto the paper without adding it into the total. They would use this if you want to print something like an account number at the top of the tape. It's a number to print, but it doesn't actually represent something you want to add. Over here we got this thing marked repeat and error. This is actually a switch with three positions. Right now it's in the middle, which is sort of the default position. If I hit it down to where it says error, it will clear off any number typed into the keyboard. You do this if you type something wrong or something weird is happening with the input and you just want to start over. If you flick the switch up, it puts the machine into repeat mode, which is for basic multiplications. With the repeat switch on, you can type a number and crank it over and over, and it'll stay on the keyboard. So if I want to multiply, say, 777 times 8, I just type 777 on the keyboard, I hit the repeat, and crank it 8 times. All of this is pretty standard. To me what's special about this machine is the little glass window here. It's classy and strange all at the same time. I love that you can see the mechanism inside there, but it's not just for aesthetics. You actually need the window to see your numbers because the paper is still inside the machine when it prints. This lever here will shove the paper out the hole just the right amount to rip off where you want it. So they need the window because the printer is so far down inside the machine. But why do they make the printer so far down inside the machine? Maybe this whole arrangement is just to keep everything cleaner? A typical arrangement would have the printing mechanism and sometimes even the ink ribbon itself exposed to the air. So maybe they thought this would keep dust and other stuff out. Anyway, it looks really cute. Another feature that I love, the case has quick release knobs on it. 
You just hit these guys and you can easily take off the case and see the inside. The insides are arranged nicely so you can really see a lot of the mechanism. The design makes it pretty easy to get a look at all the little parts in there too. You know, these old machines make me feel something. This thing was built with one basic function, adding. It was made in the 1950s. It lived through the Vietnam War, the end of the Cold War, the invention of the internet, the 9-11 attacks, the rise and fall of Milli Vanilli, and here it is in my basement. I look at it and I say, wow, here you are after all these years, and you're still beautiful. But this machine didn't really live those years, did it? I mean, for most of that time, the machine wasn't doing anything. You know who did live those years? Dolores. While this thing was sitting in the basement, Dolores lived those years. She got married, had kids, grandkids. I mean, I feel like I've lived a full life, but she's been around twice as long. What else can I say but, here you are after all these years. You're still beautiful.